These are vintage. Vintage Klipsch RF 3-2s, not 3-2, 3, then the Roman numeral 2, because, I don't know, fucking Klipsch is a terrible name in conventions. And these were loaned to me by a person local. I didn't have to ship these, thank God. And he's like, you gotta hear old school Klipsch. These are what, old school. Now we're not talking about, I think these are 2001 to like 2003 these came out. I have the webpage open. Uh, here's the impedance, is 8 ohms, maximum input power 150 watts. Someone stamped it. Who they tested it by and the internals in this were um wired with custom z series from um monster cable and yeah, i'm gonna give them their review i set them up they're on my coffee tables right now uh two reasons number one it's a lot easier to review them without bending upside down number two uh, height dominance if you don't know about height dominance it's my personal theory that raising a speaker up even just six inches at you know the listening distance will actually make it sound more impressive and larger. Now, these tables are too high for what I would use really and realistically, but I don't have two similar items that could hold 70 pound tower speakers up. Cinder blocks will do it. Go get some seven inch cinder blocks and a piece of carpet sample and throw cinder blocks down on carpet and then put your speakers just up, just up. Now, when these are on the ground and I'm sitting really slouched down in my, my couch, my ear is probably right around this level, which is not bad. It's not bad. I usually like to keep um, ear level, sort of like where the, the full focus of the speaker is. So you've got these two eights. These are eight inch, by the way. So they're producing sound. And then you have the tweeter up here, which is an old, you could tell this is an old pair of clips because they really, number one, I think the, the copper is actually a different color than it is currently. I don't know, you're gonna have to, I could get the um, uh, RMS, RP600s out and judge that. But old school hard plastic, the new ones were all rubberized and every single mounting screw, screw is uh, exposed. So definitely not a modern build. They don't do it like that anymore. Um, but like I was saying, when you get in front of these, the sound doesn't just come from here. The sound comes from a mixture of treble and uh, mid bass and mid range. So that's going to sort of come from like this area. So it'd be nice if this area here was ear level and you just can't sit that low unless you literally Indian style on the floor. So raise your speakers up just, just a bit. This is too much. This is extreme. But raise them up. See if you enjoy it. It's literally free unless you buy things. So, listening impressions to these. Now, I don't do tower speakers. Everyone says, Zeus, Zeus, you gotta do tower speakers. Zeus, when are you gonna do tower speakers? Well, now that I have more space, there is a possibility that I can get shipped to me tower speakers, take the boxes they're in, store the boxes in the other apartment, and then review things without having like piles and piles of boxes in my corners. So there's a possibility. The only issue is shipping these things. This is a this is a child's coffin, all right? These are I have two of them. Every every one is two. So when you ask me to review something, keep in mind that even if I get it here for free or if you loan it to me, it has to leave again. It has to be insured and has to be shipped in a box is usually much bigger than the speaker itself. The boxes to my JBL Studio 590s are the size of my daybed. It's ridiculous. So while I now have much, much greater chance of doing a set of towers, probably not gonna happen all the time. However, let's talk about these. Klipsch, um, if you had to describe these speakers in like three words, Zios, because we don't have all fucking day, what would it be? Efficient, V-shaped, mid-bass thunder. Now efficient, I want you to listen for a second, because I pride myself on my living room setup here, but it's not perfect, but it's okay if it's not perfect. You see, I'm one of those people who understands enough. So I want to go to Rocky Mountain, uh, go fund me in the description for Rocky Mountain, go to Rocky Mountain, I'm going to be able to show people what enough is to me. Now, I'm using these Crown amplifiers, which are very, very clean amplifiers, and I'm using a mini DSP HD, 
over here to control the whole setup. That amp and these amps, and oh, here are the covers for these, by the way. Don't wanna, don't wanna miss out on these glorious things that Klipsch thought was, was sexy when they used to cover the entire fascia. So I pride myself on my living room setup, and I've impressed many people here. But I usually impress them with either the ohms or smaller, much less efficient speakers. The problem you get when you get a speaker as efficient as these, and I'm talking fucking seriously efficient, is when you put your head near the tweeter. And that's a little bit there, but listen here. You start hearing buzzing and hissing and whirring, and it's like, what is that? Is that, is that the amps? I know it's not the amps. What it is, is I'm running RCA signal from the Mini DSP HD. I'm converting it to XLR because XLRs are much cheaper to purchase. I'm literally just using a converter thing. No power, no signal boost, just And I'm running uh, two, five, 10, 15, 20, like 25, 26 feet of signal from there to there. And because these speakers are so efficient, because the amplifiers are goddamn monsters just sitting there idle, any little peep and noise and motor induction from that fan power cord running next to it is all being amplified and I can hear it. I can hear it. I can hear it just bzzz. It's, it's alive and I hate it. I would not be proud of this setup if I had these speakers. I'd have to just immediately strip everything down and be like, nope, gotta get bigger shielding, higher, higher impedance wires, you got wireless, gotta go away from the power, because every little bullshit thing is now audible. And that's good and, good and bad. Bad in that my 30 foot speaker ca my signal cables are now blatantly, um, woefully un, apologetically fucked up and showing off all sorts of badness. However, it means when you put on music, and this is loud, 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 loud music. I'd like to bring your attentions to, if you paid attention to my RB42 uh, review, the little tiny speakers, I showed on the meters on the amps that I was actually touching the red. And I wanna show you where the meters are here. You see that? No, you fucking didn't. They're not even lighting up. I'm at 20 decibels off. If, if we go by the wallpaper available in the description, if we go by the FUBAR volume control, which is here, we are there, which is negative 20 decibels off of zero, which is basically what I consider the maximum. We're not even activating the VU meters, and these are already this loud. That's insane. <laughs> you could power these with a Leapi 2020 and no one would be the wiser because they are that efficient. They probably need 25 watts at most to like fill a room. I wish some speakers were like this, but then again, we got that same problem. The more efficient the speaker, the more volume they get from less power, the more clean those first watts have to be. And usually in my living room, especially with like the Ohm Walsh's, which sit there going, feed me, feed me power. I don't have to worry about that, those first like that half a watt noise, cause she literally, it's inaudible. So this is one of the problems when you get like a magnifying glass and start looking at shit. You know, supermodels look great. Then you start getting closer, then you get closer. All of a sudden you see the stubble on their like chin and you're like, oh God, that's what these are. These are the stubble on the supermodel's chin. Now, Sound signature is as follows. These are concert speakers. These are speakers I wanna to listen to. I had a couple live things come on and I was fucking woeful. As impressed as I am with my ohms, which is saying something, it really is. Now again, I don't get many tower speakers on my chopping block. In fact, I have another set with dual eights and those are my JBLs I was just talking about, and I have them pulled these out from the soon to be reincarnated sim racing rig in a while. But if I did, I have a feeling I would, I would compare them almost directly, except in one aspect ratio. One aspect, not aspect ratio. My brain's on auto. That was from Space Dandy, by the way. 
You could just hear all the strings are being shot out at this, right in your face. It doesn't actually hurt. I'm, I'm used to the old clip stuff being like pain. This is not pain. I think because it's the biggest tower they offered at the time, it's all sort of balanced out. I think the bookshelves, the smaller ones, something dealing with like a single five and a quarter or a single six and a half, they would have probably put this exact same tweeter on it. And your face would just melt. So this is all very balanced. The problem comes with the low end because here's the thing, two eight inch speakers in the front does not the low end make. I'm pretty sure the RB42 is a single four inch with that port and the hardened box. I'm pretty sure that actually can probably reach lower Hertz ratings than these. Because yeah, you give me two eight inch drivers. Which one's the subwoofer? Which one is the dedicated, closed in, calculated port one? Oh fucking neither. You see, the way this speaker is designed, this is the way all speakers were designed back in the day, because it was just it's a volume monster. It's here to kill you your face with volume. And it does that very efficiently. But these two drivers literally open up into this box, and I don't know, I couldn't find any internals of a speaker from 2001, but I'm pretty sure there's nothing in here. And then, if we tilt this forward and don't drop it on the floor, you could see the port, which is big enough for an elephant to fuck it. And it ends there. This is, how do I do this? I'm Zeos, God damn it! I always have a choice. Hi. Look at it. It's literally... There's just nothing here. There's not really a port. It's a hole. Klipsch gave you a hole. And it's very similar on the, um... JBLs, actually. Two smaller holes, but they don't go in. There's no port tuning. They're not trying to drag 30 hertz out of these. Because that's not their job. These things have a job of, when this tweeter cuts off, wherever that is, 2,500 to 2,000, these are doing all the mid-range, and then all the mid-bass, and when you get to bass, and I mean like 35 hertz bass, they're busy. They, they, don't, they don't deliver almost any sub-bass. I put Run the Jewels on, and you're thinking you're going to sit here, and the doors are going to shake off their hinges. And it doesn't, it slaps you in the chest. You get like a real thud, but no boom boom. These absolutely require you to put a subwoofer with them because that's not what that is designed for. That, that hole, this hole here, it, it, I can play. That's not the basic song I want. Nine Inch Nails, Red Line. Father John Misty, Fat John, wait. This is perfect for him, right? This, like a thud, thud, a thud. A thud is all you get. You'll never get rolling 40 hertz and below. You're just gonna get an impact. And you're gonna get an impact because whatever amplifier you're using has headroom. I guarantee you. You can use a 50 watt per channel Marantz receiver and you'll have plenty of headroom for these speakers. You'll be able to push them to the skies. And as long as you don't have a signal chain that's as ridiculous as mine, where it's that, and then there's analogs come out into this, and then the thing, and it splits into XLRs just so it could run along the thing, and you'll be fine. Now, I don't think you're gonna, anyone's gonna run out to uh, eBay right now and pick these up. But if you ever see a set, and you wanna hear them, all you can expect is that they're gonna sound huge, they're gonna kick you in the face, and they're gonna need a subwoofer. They need, they fucking need. Now I, I, since I have the mini DSP over there, I can hit, see here's the thing, I have to go and play with settings. Because when I set my mini DSP HD, linked in the description by the way, future Zeus, my mini DSP HD, this thing, my, this thing that I love right here, all dusty and everything. What this does, this is actually my DAC for when I'm listening to music. Whenever I'm uh, uh, listening to anything in this living room, when I say I'm um, FUBAR, play, 
Fubar Outputs Fiber Optic. There's a fiber optic splitter for whenever I'm using other things. Fiber Optic comes into the Mini DSP. The Mini DSP DAC has four outputs. Two of these here go to this amp. And that amp runs to those subwoofers. And those subwoofers are off right now. You tell Mini DSP not to use them. And these two wires go out and get converted here to XLR. And then those go to the amps in the front that power the speakers. So the fact that I can get in there and tell subwoofers, specifically those Infinity 10 inch, to take over and level match and phase correct and then work and blend with this would be perfect. But I haven't done that. I haven't gone and tweaked them. I'm just listening to these speakers doing a quick test. And if I tried to turn those subs on, they'll be waiting for me to push my normal volumes, which these supersede by being fuck all crazy efficient. But it is possible to take a mini DSP like that and do exactly what I have happening is worth the noise. It's worth the noise to be able to go in there and, and literally go in and tune and say, okay, well now these are super crazy efficient speakers. So let's lower their output down. Now the subwoofer will raise and lower the normal master volume. Everything will sort of blend and oh, I've got them three feet further forward than my ohms or four feet further forward. So we're gonna do a shift and delay so that the time alignment happens when you're sitting in the normal listening position. It's wonderful things. I know how I'm like mini DSP HD reviewing in the middle of this clip review, but you're not buying these, are you? If you have them, I'm telling you about them. I'm telling you this is the old school clip sound. It's mid bass, mid bass, mid bass, and volume. I'm, I'm surprised the treble doesn't hurt. I'm actually really impressed by the amount of detail these horns are throwing. Really impressed by it. But at the same time, I'd love to, I'd have to wheel out like a, I could bring my old phase linear out here and plug an MP3 player with a one foot cable into it and then it'll probably be silent. String quartet. <laughs> We could actually, if you want to hear something, I did this for the owner. He'd never done it before. I'm just going to disconnect the bridge because there are two bridges. So now we're no longer feeding power to the tweeters. The whole point of that is you put the bridges in, you just run one amp. If you just sep separate the bridges, you can run a separate amplifier for the tweeters, which if you wanted to run a small tube amp, produces, you know, one, two, three watts. You could run the tweeters off a tube amp and then keep solid state stuff for the low end. This way you got a little more power. Now these are so efficient that wouldn't matter, but let's hear what this sounds like again, that exact same song, I'll back it up even, without the horns. And that's really telling. When you get like a two-way that's this sort of size and you disconnect the treble, you can really like, if it sounds so nasally, that's the bulk of the sound coming out of these speakers is that. So if you do that and you put on something more okay, bassy. I'll sing a bit then say something I... So that's so much vocals coming out of just there and it's just, the high end's just gone obviously because it's not plugged in. Game of Thrones Symphony. Remember when Game of Thrones was great? Oh, I miss those days. Yeah, they're not impressive without the tweeters turned on, obviously. But they also, you can, you can hear the limitations. You get sort of distracted when you can hear the whole thing. When you separate it, you play just this or just this, you sort of go, oh, yeah, it's sort of like a big ball of mid-range. And it's what it is. These are way more... They actually act more like a bookshelf as far as frequency response than most bookshelves most modern bookshelves the rp 600 m's i actually let the owner borrow those and take them home while he left these here because he was like he was like oh, i have some speakers i could use you can have these for a week and i'm like why don't you take these rp 600 m's as insurance and let me play with these for two or three weeks and he's like shit and i'm like yeah fine that's fine Just get another box out of my house i don't need them here right now and i guarantee you those speakers just those single six and a half inch clips, which I will link in the description also, do more low end than this. They have more balance than this. They don't quite have the grandeur of sound, this wall of like, those tweeters are doing a lot.
That's um, Graham Revel from The Saint. Who saw The Saint with Val Kilmer? Remember when Val Kilmer was a great actor? I remember those days. A lot of, lot of Pepperidge Farm moments today on Z Reviews. Point is, I do like these speakers. I don't think I'd trade any of my speakers for them. And as much as uh, people love efficiency, uh, if you've got a noisy system, which blatantly I do at this very moment, where I could just leave it in here. Take it. Sounds like there's one 10 button to the back of the speaker. Then you might want to think about skipping something that's efficient. Granted, I have more power than I'd say anyone watching. Anybody have more power than I do in their living room? Because this is a man thing. I have 2,500 watts into four ohms per channel. Bring it. What is it? What is it? Please step on me, bro. Bro. Old Klipsch. Better than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to get them in here and I was going to really just despise the way they sounded. Because he offered them and I'm like, oh, I want a hair nearly 20 year old Klipsch towers, like, what is it gonna bring? And I've been absolutely satisfied listening to music on it, as long as I turn the subs on with it. Or if I'm you know, watching surround sound, I have these turned way the fuck down and the point one kicks on, which I just happen to have sent to me by a worldwide stereo. <sighs> Another copper cone, actually there. I didn't even, I didn't even remember. That I could compare the color of the cones. Excuse. Scusi. Yeah, that's an orange. And that's copper. That's new clipsh. Now that's not on, obviously. I'd have to put in surround sound and change the output device. But there you go. So new copper shiny. This orange plastic. I love new clipsh. I'm okay with old clipsh. And then really old clips, we're just talking about, these are like 2001, 2003. I mean, that's old clips, but it's not like old clips. It's not like men with beards have to carry it out of the basement old. That's the stuff I'd love to try a little bit of. But you're going to offer it and they're going to be like, yeah, they're the size of these cabinets and they're wrapped in boxes twice the size of those cabinets and shipping's $4,000. I'm like, no. No. Uh, I'm not going to do a sound demo for these. I was considering it, but... I think the way I'm describing it should be enough and it's not like you're going to make any purchasing decisions based on this video. It's just sort of like one of those nice, let me include it videos in the daily lineup. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Download the wallpaper in the description. And that should be tread on me. But I, whoever made the thing didn't do it right and it's actually pretty gnarly, the wallpaper itself. But you could deal. Um, thank you for loaning these to me, to the owner. Uh, check out the Patreon, which doesn't matter in this particular video. Although, if the RMAF gold isn't reached, a lot of that Patreon money is going to be spent on plane tickets and hotels and food and insurance and gas for a truck. So, if you want to see these reviews early, by like a week or so, Join the Patreon. If you want to be in the yard sales on the 1st to the 10th where I sell things, if the owner gave these to me and said, here, I don't want them anymore, and I don't want them, I'd offer them to my patrons first, from the 1st to the 10th. Any bid goes, and I ship free in the US, which would suck. I'd probably have to make an amendment for dower speakers. Like, I ain't shipping these for free, because there's no way someone's going to buy these for the cost it would be to ship them to, like, Washington State. And finally, if you want to ask me a question, any question about home theater setup, about um, why do you have Danny DeVito on your wall? If you want to ask me that question, well, you should be a patron. And then you could ask me either on Patreon through their terrible messaging system, which is absolutely horrific, in the comments of the most recent posts, or in the $10 tier, you get into a private Telegram chat, which has blossomed into its own community of almost 201 people. So there's that existence if you want to join it. Other than that, thank you again for the, loaning me these speakers. I hope you enjoyed me wandering around, pointing at them and going, you make a sound good now. Beach Boys, Wild Honey. Oh, one last thing before I end it, because that would have been a cool way to end it. I did notice one other little caveat. 
if these speakers weren't perfectly aligned, if one of them was just pushed further back or turned slightly, imaging was destroyed. The, the, the waveguide shape has been wholly improved in modern clipshes where if you do this, it sort of doesn't matter. But with these, every little inkling, if it wasn't straight, just made them sound out of phase. So yeah, modern clipsh is the way to go. But these, 